Hi, it's Cameron Shackle from Active Adapter. This is just a follow-up session to our user provisioning portal demo, um, which is another video on our YouTube channel. In that video, I showed you how I created a simple proof of concept application that takes a web page, which turns the information we enter there into XML, submits it to BizTalk, and then we use a map to transform it into the Active Adapter format, which goes out through an Active Adapter send port and creates uh, an Active Directory object. Uh, we've had a few inquiries about what map um, I used to do that, um, and this is the map here. It takes the schema from our web portal, which is a fairly generic flat style um, schema, um, which might be used to update numerous systems through BizTalk and transforms it into the Active Adapter Update Schema. And the main complexity in here is turning all these different values into change clauses within the Active Directory Update document. And the way I like to achieve that is using the table looping functoid and some table extractors with some not equal to functoids as well which become logical gates on the table looping functoid and that just blocks out any elements that are empty in the uh, source XML. Uh, I'll try and do a, a quick um, demonstration of how you put that sort of map together here I've got the two schemas set up on a map. I've got some static values going into the uh, upper parts of the update schema. So the main thing we're focusing on is the getting all these values into change clauses. Um, and the way I would do that is first of all to add a table looping punctoid and some table extractors. I might just do two here for the sake of brevity, but you'll get the idea. And to create the logical gate, I'll put in a couple of not equal to from toys. So there are our shapes. Um, suppose we wanted to create a message that would update a couple of properties. Um, suppose we wanted to update the display name and the office name. Hook those up there. And our condition would be blank. And the same there. So that will create um, a false value if the uh, values in the source XML are anything other than um, empty. And in our table looping, we need to create, first of all, our top level loop. Then our number of table rows, let's say three. And then we can link up our data. From there also. And then if we have a look inside now, we've got our gated column, and we've got three columns in our table. We've got some inputs, and we also need to create um, some constants to go with each of our inputs. Um, so we might need a constant for display name. Actually, uh, we would need the Active Directory attribute name. 
and for office I think that one is physical delivery location okay then we can go in and set up our well, one more step probably these links that come from our not equal the simplest way to set those up is to name them so that you can see them within your table looping functoid and my convention is to put an NE not equal on the end of those so that you can identify them when they come up in the table looping functoid so if we go into our table now we've ticked the box that column one is a logical gate so display name not equal is our logical gate there and office not equal is our logical gate there column two will hold the actual value of the display name and the second one it will hold office now column three that will be display name the name of the active directory attribute and the office name is physical delivery location so that creates a simple table of values that we can loop through to create our target message um, just remembering the numbering of the columns there so column 2 has the values column 3 has the display name so on our table on our table extractors we go through those and we'll put column 2 in there and column 3 in there column 2 is the value so we'll call that change to value Column 3 is the property name. Okay, so there's a, a simple map. Um, if we test that map now, uh, first of all, I'll make sure we've got some input, which looks like that, the simple form, and our output will go to that map output XML. So we'll delete that old one. And if I test that map now, and that succeeded, we've now got a new map output, which looks like that. I think that was the wrong one. sorry we're working on copy so we're generating an instance to come in I'll adjust that to take the input I showed you before so the portal input and output instance will be that okay we test the right map this time And that succeeded. We have a look at our output. This time you can see that the two values that we've been working with there, the display name, the physical delivery location, have come through and the values that we inputted, Jane Active and Paris La Defense, have come through as well. So they've been successfully mapped to that Active Directory update message. So it's a little bit complicated, but it's the best way to keep track of all the different parts of a message going through a map. And this isn't unique to Active Adapter. This is a standard part of any biz talking. Um, so I hope that's helped a little bit in how to, how to work more efficiently with transforming messages into the Active Adapter format. Uh, thanks very much for watching and happy business talking.